All right, so without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome, um, my name is Janet. I am the business owner at Abbott Bookshop. Today is the ninth anniversary of when we opened our doors to our very first bookstore, Abbott on Prince Avenue. So I recognize a lot of people who uh, are here at this event who were either there at that opening night party. I see some names of people who volunteered for us to help us uh, build the store together when uh, the store doors weren't even open yet. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Um, we have a really special event tonight. Years ago, um, at, for those of you who read the event page, you saw that um, I befriended an author named Jennifer Niven. I got uh, early access to a manuscript of a book of hers called All the Bright Places. And I read it several months before it came out and fell in love with this book. Um, and most of you here know that it went on to be a huge, huge bestseller. It's a perennial bestseller. It's now a movie that you can watch on Netflix. Um, one of the producers of the movie is actually Mitchell Kaplan, who is my mentor, who owns a bookstore in Miami, which is pretty cool. Um, we love Jennifer. We love this new novel, Breathless. Um, and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy tonight. So without uh, further ado, I'd like to tell you, well, I'll bring on our MC for the night and tell you that we're gonna here and there, bring different guests on of all the special guests we have tonight. And then at some point, all the special guests will be on here. And then from what I think is gonna be my favorite part, we're gonna invite everybody who's comfortable to turn on their screens later in the event. We'll cue you when that is, so we can all wave hello and do some Q and A with the authors. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Justin Conway, uh, AKA the real Jeremiah Crew for anybody who's read Breathless yet. Um, he's also the spouse of Jennifer Niven, our guest of honor tonight. So. Justin, if you can reveal yourself, um, we would love to have you begin emceeing the event. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi, nice to see you guys. Yay. Ah, Thank so you uh, so much for having us. This is exciting. It's amazing. And, um, and thanks for everybody for joining us as well. Janet, would you just repeat one more time because uh, I'm not real tech literate. Uh, and maybe for those other folks in the crowd there, what they can do so they're only seeing the partic video participants for now? Sure, so if you are seeing non-video participants, AKA just those gray squares, you can hover in over any one of those gray squares. Um, and once you do, you'll see that square is uh, sort of highlighted in yellow and stay hovering over it in the upper right corner of that square rectangle you'll see a little blue square with three dots in it. If you click that once, there's a little drop down menu, go to that and then select hide non-video participants. And then you'll only see the featured stars of the night as they come on screen. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so it's gonna be, uh, I think a, a not so typical author event um, and, uh, and, uh, and we're looking forward to it. So we're here in, in quarantine. What's it like being a independent bookstore owner in, in quarantine for you, Janet. Um, so the positive side of things is that it almost feels like the really early days of Avid when we had no money, but a lot of creativity and we're working to try to get the store open for the very first time. So a lot of pivoting, quick thinking, reinventing the business, reinventing the wheel feels like every hour, um, which for me is a really fun challenge. Um, and also distracts me from the horrible things going on in the world. Um, and on a more sobering note, it's been very stressful. It's really worrisome for my staff members, for our customers who we don't feel comfortable letting in the store because we don't want to put them at risk of getting sick. So we've been only doing online orders only and phone orders and we do contactless curbside pickup, but we haven't been able to hug anybody or even see anybody face to face uh, since March 16th. So that's been really difficult. Um, also, one thing that big book lovers know is that if multiple independent bookstores are doing poorly, then all of us are brought down. And one independent bookstore per week on average has closed since the pandemic started, which is a lot. That's since March, almost every single week on average a bookstore is closed. Um, so we know that while we are doing okay, not great, but Avid Bookshop's doing okay right now, uh, we are so far from being out of the woods and our industry is indeed in a lot of trouble. 
Um, but one thing that buoys my spirits is that people turn to books um, when they need comfort, when they need to understand themselves better, when they wanna feel connected. And so I think as long as we can continue serving our audience and making sure that they get books that really connect with them, um, I think we should be good for a while, but um, yeah. So overall, it's very stressful. I'm doing a lot of mindfulness. I'm doing a lot of reading <laughs> and a lot of connecting with my community to try to keep the spirits up of me and my staff. What's your guilty pleasure read right now? So I have a hot take on this. I don't believe in feeling guilty over anything. I there you go. <laughs> um, I don't have a guilty pleasure hot read right now. Um, I have been reading more romance, which used to not be typical for me. And in fact, it was um, at a panel discussion. There's a bookstore called The Ripped Bodice, which I know Jennifer is familiar with. It was the first romance only bookstore open in California. Um, and I was at a panel at a bookseller conference. And I remember the women at the head of that store saying, did you ever know, notice that the only genre that is written primarily by women for women focus on the pleasure of women is like the one genre that gets made fun of the most. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I started reading more romance, which just kind of felt edgier than I thought it would. Um, yeah, and I listen to a lot of audiobooks because we sell audiobooks now too. So yeah, I just always have at least three books going at any given time, none of them guilt, guilty feeling. There you go, good stuff. <laughs> so I see we've got folks from all over the world and the States, which Yay. is great, like Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, Turkey I've seen, Paraguay, Puerto Rico, all over the place. So it's, it's great, there's a lot of folks. So let's, uh, let's jump into the event and uh, how about we bring on our first guest. Ooh. And uh, Adriana, are you here? <laughs> I'm here, hi guys. Here she hi. is. <laughs> so, Hunting November. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> I wrote that. The, you wrote Buy this. There you go. Yeah. Right. It just came out in March. May. Yeah. May. May. May that's right. It's so, amazing. So, how did you come to know Jennifer? Well, let's see. We were both living in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, our mutual friend, who you will see in a moment, Carrie Clutter, is the knower of all things and all people. <laughs> and she said, Let's go to Y'all West. And I said, Okay. And it was before I had published a book, and I had I met Jennifer, and we just started talking immediately. It was like instant friendships, which is something I love about writing in general. Authors are some of my besties now, and I never even I never knew an author before I started writing. So that's a really cool, fun thing about this. I community. remember I'll never forget Adriana, like the time we spent on Angela's couch, and Angela will be here in a little bit too. But we were talking about all things creepy and gothic and spooky. And, and it just was like hours passed. And, you know, we were just like, oh my gosh, yes, I love it. And it was one of the many bonding times that we've had. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's what's so fun is that you when you're with other people who tell stories you can be just as weird and imaginative and um tell really fun dirty jokes and all kinds of things happen because you just let it out which is which is great exactly that may happen to me so creepy you live in a haunted house don't you you write about uh some crazy stuff <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> so this is this is one of those funny things where uh, the first book I wrote was How to Hang a Witch, which is about uh, someone who befriends a ghost because I was like, oh, there's not enough friendly ghost stories out there. And it seems that ever since I started writing about ghosts, I have lived in places where ghosts are <laughs> frequent. So yay me. <laughs> so in Breathless, and it was actually within an hour of Jennifer and I meeting for the first time. Literally, she got in a stranger's truck, mine, and drove on this <laughs> island to uh, uh, just a maybe a hundred, over a hundred year old house, a big home. And, and we got locked in the basement. As I was telling the story that there is- He was just telling a ghost story. Literally saying, and, and I try not to believe in that stuff, but it, it was creepy. I, 
I kind of have to when things like that happen, but. Um, and I was like secretly videoing him telling me, well, not secretly, you knew I was videoing you telling me about the ghost story. Cause I was like, it's research, but <laughs> I was like, and I was pretending like I didn't care where the like phone went. So I was like, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but when you turn around, I'd be like, like on him. And then of course the ghost locked us into the basement. Yeah. I, it was like, you know, and wouldn't it be funny if we were locked in? Right. And, and, we and I was actually going to do the whole like pull on the door <laughs> and it not open, try and be kind of, and it was locked. Yeah. Um, so. You guys are brave. I don't do basements. Like <laughs> as a general rule, I do not do basements. Um, the lights go out in mine frequently when you go down there. So um, I'm particularly cautious, but I, I yeah, that. I've. I think that I would have not maintained conversation as much as I write like <laughs> spooky stuff. I'm the biggest weenie in the whole land. And the moment that something terrifying happens as in, you know, someone says boo behind me, I'm under my covers. Like that's it. <laughs> I sleep with a nightlight. So <laughs> I hear that. Cause I'm always the one who's like, let's go to a haunted place and like stay there. And then I can't sleep. I'm like, why am I doing this? Why are we doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a baby about it. So how are you staying sane through uh, quarantine? Oh, um, writing, writing, family. I mean, those cats, cats help. Um, yeah, I have friends. I think you know, we always look to the big things to tell us what's happening in our lives, but I actually think that it's the small things that are that make the biggest difference and it's the collection of those small things so like that was one of the things I loved about Breathless is that uh, Jennifer your characters collect these beautiful memories and they collect shark teeth and it's all pieces of other stories that become their own and so I'd say that I I'd say that's it, you know, it's the little things that, that really get you through. It's the kindnesses and the people and yeah, the cat, so true. back to the cat. Well, yeah, it's, it's the moments. Yes. Hmm. Thank you. And um, check this out. Yeah. From, from Avid. From Avid. You can get it right here at Avid. And what's your favorite independent bookstore? Oh, I, you know, I have to represent Salem, Massachusetts and go with Wicked Good Books. They also have a black cat logo and nice. very funny wow. merch. So that's my, you know. Good stuff. I love you, lovely local. <laughs> well, I think we're going to put you in timeout and, uh, and then bring you out when everybody's on. And we're going to uh, see if we can find Angela. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Bye, Adriana. <laughs> Hey guys, hey. Angelo. How are you? Gramps. It's my Gramps. It's my Gramps. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, Angela and I call each other Gramps and Grams, or Will and Grace. And y'all have known yep. each other for about two years. Yeah, just five, five months. thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> five thousand, like twenty years now, Gramps. I was uh, plus. Two. I think, like, yeah, we've known each other for a long time. I was two and you were seven. That was like I was. mustaches. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's the friends. <laughs> we actually met on a blind date. Yeah. And I'm super Shut gay. The door. Super gay. And a mutual <laughs> friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours thought that we would be like a really great couple and hooked us up and she had us come over to her house for dinner. Um, and she was right. We Yeah. Right, we, we were fell in we fell madly, yeah, madly in love, but it was platonic, of course. Right, and that was, you know, and, and she would take us into the kitchen and be like, what do you think of him? What do you think of her? And she was like, I'm gay. <laughs> I, like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> and I think she's awesome. <laughs> so, so my Angelo story is, you know, uh -oh. we met, yeah. fell in love, some would say quickly, Pretty much. Instantly, um, mm -hmm. and moved pretty fast. And um, you were probably the, the person besides Uncle Bill that I was most nervous about. As you should be. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, and you met the day after we met. Yeah. 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 On that so, island. The island. Yeah. I, I came out to Cumberland Island 
to meet Jen because we were going to do a writer's retreat together and we're just going to sort of isolate for a couple of weeks and write our perspective things that we we're going to do. And of course she went and <laughs> fell in love and I show up the next day and I'm like, wait a minute, what's happening here? What, this is Will and Grace and then Jack shows up <laughs> and I'm like, no, no. Yeah. That's basically what happened. Well, these things happen. So, <laughs> Angelo, the uh, dangerous art of blending in. Dangerous art of blending in. Best and worst book. parts about writing a book. Ready, go. Look at this cover. Oh, the best and worst parts. Oh my gosh. Uh, the worst part is it's gonna sound, it's gonna sound so weird, but I know that people that write and Jennifer, I know you can relate to this. The worst part is when it comes out because oh. it's out, and now you are like so freaked the F out <laughs> and you wanna, my favorite story is the Jennifer story when she wrote one of her very first books and I'm gonna let you tell it because you, go ahead and tell the story. I think it's such I a beautiful. I was in, in Century City at Brentano's which is no longer there. And I remember going to that bookstore and the Ice Master, my first book had come out and I was terrified and I was just like, oh my God, I wanted, I saw it on the shelf and I wanted to scoop up all the copies and take them away out of the bookstore, run out of there with them and not let anyone see them. I felt so vulnerable and exposed. And then this man walked up and he picked up the book and he opened it as I was standing there and he was reading the jacket flap. And then he goes, put it down and walked away. And I was like, get back there and get that book. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> not pick up an amazing book by Jennifer Nevin. So yeah, that's, I think and that's, that's the worst I part. Yeah. Yeah, that's the worst part. But I think the best part for me, at least, is, is being alone with a book and going to places that you just don't think. It, it, even, even if you plan it out, even if you do all the layouts and, and all, all the stuff that you think you're going to put in there, it just takes you to places that you don't expect. And to me, that's the most exciting and fun part because characters start to have their own life and kind of pull you in a direction you never thought was possible. And that's the best part. It's magic. Yeah, it's that's magic. magic. That's the good stuff. Yeah. Shout in the readers. And Angela, you've been just kind of laying around bonbons by the pool, you know. A hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Actually, 100%. Angela, Angelo is the like craziest, hardest working, you know. Oh yeah, by the way, we'll be on the phone. I started, you know, I did a whole rug line and that came out last week. And then there was my whole furniture line and I'm working on this book. And, and I'm, I'm doing like, art. He's like an amazing, I mean, brilliant designer. Too. Listen, it takes a lot of work to grow the 70s mustache. Don't yeah. think this happens all by itself. That is amazing. A lot of work. Stuff. <laughs> well, Angela, I think we're going to put you in timeout and see if we can uh, find Brittany and then we'll uh, see you in just a few. Mm -hmm. See you guys later. Love you, Jennifer. Love you. That was great. I love these questions coming in too. Me too. Hi! Yay! <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, there we go. Wait. Oh my gosh. Not all the books. Amazing. Look at this cover. It's, I know, I'm obsessed. It's so beautiful. So, Brittany, you and I have not really spent really oh, any time. Three. with Bree, yeah. Justin, so, Justin. So nice to meet you. <laughs> she's secretly like just judging me and I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> So hard. I'm judging you so hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing woman. You know, she she needs a good guy. But um, so how are you? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm how really did you excited meet, to be uh, here. What's that? I said I'm really excited to be here. There you go. Well, how did you meet Jennifer? Uh, we met. I think it was Jeff Zentner who brought me over to Jennifer's table at um, at a festival and sat me down next to you. It was like eight o'clock in the morning, and we were both like clutching our first coffee coffees. And he was like, "I think you two would really like each other." And then we sat down, and then it was like eight hours went by. Uh -huh, exactly. It was amazing. amazing. We just yeah, we just like had so much to talk about, and I was like fully obsessed with this like brilliant Julia Roberts-esque like brain <laughs> sitting next to me. Um, and we like kept going until like midnight, I think like after the festival. Like, sat out by the fire. I remember everyone else was like doing their stuff after, you know, things you do after a book festival. And the three of us sat around that fire and like had drinks and we just talked and it was amazing. Until, it like, was like the best first date ever basically. And I was so excited after I was like, oh my God. 
Oh my God. I texted you right away. I was like, Oh my God. I know. I know. I know. And then the tragedy is that we lived so far apart. And so like, I get to see you like once every two years and it breaks my heart. Exactly. But it's always so wonderful when we get to yes. do that. So someday you'll actually get to meet in person. There we go. We will. Maybe. Hopefully. Never know. Yeah. <laughs> we left uh, LA on March 3rd for four days and haven't been back since. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah. You picked a beautiful place to go hide out though. We did. we did. It's near where we fell in love. So. So it's very near the island where Claude and Maya meet. Yeah. Gosh, so it. what are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? I just finished the new ton of French mystery, The Searcher. I'm oh, so obsessed with her. Oh my gosh, no. Are you kidding? I read this the second I got it. This is not the most recent book. Jennifer sent this to me and I got it in my hot little hands and I was just like BRB forever and like <laughs> ran away to read it. Um, no. no, no. You were saying you were reading. Um, what was I reading? Not as good as that. I read Tana French's The Searcher. Um, she's that, like yeah. my favorite mystery writer. Jen, have you read her books? I just started reading um, the first one. We need to have a book club. You need to text me screaming when you get to the end. Oh my God, I will because yeah. I'm obsessed already. Oh my God, she writes like the most beautiful, beautiful language. And then her books are like, I always get like three fourths of the way through and I'm like, there's no coming back from this. Like she manages to set up these mysteries where it's like, you have no idea how things are going to work out. I just, I'm like giving myself chills. I just, I don't know. Anyway, um, it's so like, what Tana French is to mystery is what you are to like smart romance. Like I'm 100% there, at least to, at least in this book, which was so deeply swoony that it's a little weird that I'm meeting Justin now. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's, it's still fiction. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So what's your favorite independent bookstore? Um, I'm going to have to rep Traverse City, uh, Michigan and say brilliant books. Um, they're wonderful and they're holding up through the pandemic, which is great. I bought like a giant gift card from them when the pandemic started and addressed it to future Brie from past Brie. And it's just been sitting on my fridge until things get better. So um, yeah, um, but I, I feel like everywhere I live, I fall in love with a bookstore like Boswell in Milwaukee. Um, I love um, Anderson's Bookshop in the Chicago suburbs is like my home away from home. We brought the... We're Italian and my mom and I brought the bookseller's cannoli cake um, once when, I, I don't know. I just, I love an independent bookstore. They're important. And does this come out in February? It does. It comes out in February. And you can <laughs> have it. So without yeah. any, any spoilers, a character from, who, who's your character mashup from Breathless? Oh my gosh, from Muse? Could be Ooh, best friend, could be romantic. Is um... Yeah, that's a, you know, I feel like Claude would be really, really tight with Beatrix, who is mm -hmm. this um, inventor. So Muse is set in like an alternate history America um, in the 19th century, and it's full of girls doing things that they shouldn't, secret illicit oh, things. Amazing. And so one of the characters, the character's best friend, her name is Beatrix, and she's racing in this world, the Wright sisters, to create the first airplane and I feel like she and Claude would be like getting up to some major trouble together I feel like they would have a blast they would oh my gosh she sounds amazing and I, yeah I agree I <laughs> read it yet, and I'm so excited because that's like on my next on we'll, my we'll put read. this on Ansley's future read shelf yes there, yes. Little, there you go all mm -hmm. right well I think Brittany we're going to now put you in time out and see if we can <laughs> find David until we're all back together Bye. so good to see you well, hello, David. Well, hello there. Beatrix. I really love that name, Beatrix. I love that name. Cool. <laughs> My earring fell off because I was so excited. I know, right? <laughs> yes. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And you have some exciting news. Yes. When is, when is the next? The baby's juice? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, weird rumors start. Um, no, um, my, my next book with Rachel Cohn, Mind the Gap, Dash and Lily, comes out, oh wait, on the worst possible pub date in the history of pub dates, that would be election day. No. So everybody, right after you vote, go buy a new book. <laughs> we will um, or maybe you'll wait until the next week, which is November 10th, which is when the Dash and Lily TV show starts on Netflix. That's um, which is awesome. I've seen the whole thing. It is amazing. Um, oh, so yeah, yeah. So, so I'm very, 
there's so many reasons I want to celebrate, um, or hopefully will want to celebrate after November 4th. Yeah. Um, and that definitely is one of them. I think it's going to be a, you know, a happy November 4th and we'll be, you know, yeah. relieved and grateful. And then we're going to have your new book. We'll and then we're going to have, book. yes. And then we're going to have the show. Yeah. So it should be cool. So you've been around the block in the YA world and, and um, for a second, for, for a hot minute. <laughs> and uh, so, and, and your books have had just a, a, a tremendous impact on, on so many people, young, including me, adult, adults, all ages. Um, when you're, when you're writing, are you thinking about that or how's that, how's that work for you? And do you feel like this responsibility? I'll just keep asking questions and not. Yeah, no, please do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our time is up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think I think the wonderful thing about YA is that you are always conscious of what how the books can mean to people. And I was very lucky that I've worked as an editor for children's books in YA for my whole professional life. So I already was very aware, even before I was an author, that the right book at the right time can make all the difference in the world. Um, and all of the authors here are contributing to that. Um, and so certainly I'm aware of that, but when I'm writing the story, I'm just in the story. I'm not thinking about that part. Um, I'm grateful that I know that somebody will read it. Um, <laughs> and I am certainly grateful once it's out in the world to see what the response is and what the books can mean. Um, and obviously for, for myself, I mean, writing about queer kids and queer identities um, has been very important to me. And so I always want to keep exploring that because there are as many queer identities as there are queer adults and teenagers. So there are plenty to write about. Um, and so I just want to keep on doing that. David, I have to say, um, I have to tell them how we met and, and mm -hmm. first tell them along the lines of what you're saying. like. I love something that you had said, and I think this may have been the first time I heard it was at the very first event I did for All the Bright Places, which was with you. Yes. And you said that we are ambassadors of empathy. And I love that. And I quote you all the time on that because I just think that's such a lovely way of putting it. But I have to just tell like people who are here that when I met you, like this is my first event for All the Bright Places. I was like, and, and you were like my YA hero, but you still are. But like, I was just like, oh my God, David Levithan is here. They're like, yes, and you're doing this event with him. So we had to move from table to table and like talk about our books. And I was so fangirling. David was like, so gracious. You were so kind and lovely. And you start telling everyone about my books because I would get tongue tied sometimes with you there as lovely as down to earth as you are. And it was amazing. So I just have to say that. I mean, the, the true story is, of course, that they were like, we have this really promising, amazing author, Jennifer Niven. What is the biggest challenge we can give her? I know. If she can survive with Levithan, I mean, <laughs> most, most debut authors, they don't, they don't last 10 minutes. They're like, oh my God, this guy? I have to deal with this? Forget YA, I'm going back to adult books. But you, you, you passed that test. They, they were like, Everybody, there was like a, a one-way mirror that Random House was looking at and being like, oh wow, she's, she's dealing, dealing with him pretty nicely. I guess, I guess she's a pro. She's hanging in there. There you go. <laughs> so if you could write a book with anyone, dead, alive, anyone, any author, who would you pick? Gosh, dead authors. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel not to, to pull a Mike Pence and just not answer the question at all that you asked. <laughs> I do want to get in how wonderful Breathless is. I mean, I think that you are clearly at the end of the tour. You're sort of sick of talking about it. And I respect <laughs> that as somebody who has toured. Um, and you have to do the tour from the same exact place every time, which again, I'm sure that makes it repetitious. But I want to assure all of the readers out there, you must read Breathless. It will make you laugh. It will make you cry. Um, and it makes you see the world in a different way. And there are just all these wonderful sentences in there that I will not quote because that would ruin it for you when you <laughs> encounter them on the page. But, but I think that it's just an extraordinary book. And again, I love, I love just, I never know what I'm going to get from Jennifer when I pick up a book. I mean, I know that I'm gonna love it, but you can tell that she's going on a journey writing it. And I love how I, as a reader, go on a journey there. It would be certainly fun to write a book with Jennifer, that is for sure, and to see 
um, if she she could pass that test again, Random House with the to go there. Um, so so yes, I will say I will say that for my living author um, and Jed. I mean, like certainly, I mean. Dickens, it would be really fascinating to see how he, how he would deal with gay teenagers. So, oh yeah, yeah. Let's 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 try to see that mashup and see how it works. That's a good answer. Nice, well done. <laughs> Thank you, David, for all those lovely words. Well, uh, I think um, I, it's probably not good to say we're going to put David Levithan in time out. But, no, I don't think you can do that. But maybe you can. Well, that's all right. I mean, Clutter is just like she's like. To go here. I, I can't hold her back. No, no, go. no one can. No. Uh, we'll see you in a minute. No. There we go. <laughs> there she is. Hi. There she is. I'm just getting like dunked on through this whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's a roast. <laughs> Hi. Like standard operating procedure. Hi. Hi. So clutter. Yeah. That's it. That's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely uh, incredible. How hard did I cry at the end of this book? Yeah. You thought like something had happened to one of the cats. I came in and I was <laughs> I couldn't get her to tell me what was wrong. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, <laughs> clutter. And I don't cry at books. I usually don't. Um, and it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. This is easily one of my favorite books of like the last 20 years. It's oh man. Amazing. Yeah. Well, that means more than I could possibly ever say. And I feel a certain amount of glee and revenge because I have sobbed <laughs> through every single one of your books. <laughs> oh, wait. So watching All the Bright Places <laughs> oh my God. in LA. Oh, yes, we watched it the with, night it came out. With together. Carrie Clutter. And I, at one point I got up and I didn't know there was that many Kleenex tissues in a box, but you, you were surrounded in a <laughs> sea of white. <laughs> Sobbing. I was watching, because I had seen the movie a couple times by then, and I was watching Carrie the whole time, and she was just like. <gasps> oh, it's, so it's so apropos, because literally the first time I met you, that's what happened is, you know, I was with Nikki Yoon, and she said, let's go to this girl, Jennifer Nibbins book launch, which was yeah. like an hour and a half away. And I was like, eh, okay. And then I met you, <laughs> like we walked in and you were so warm and just like full of light. And I thought we are going to be friends. Like it was the first mm -hmm. thought in my head. I hadn't published a book yet. So this was very presumptuous <laughs> of me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, I um, you. but like, I was like new BFF. And so then we sat down, I didn't know anything about you. And you started to tell the story of how all the bright places came about. And I was, I'm a very emotional person. So like five minutes into the launch, like I'm already like choking, holding back tears. And then you read the first chapter and I was done. Like, I was like, how am I going to sit here? Like, I'm, it's all inside me wanting to come out and I'm trapped. Like, I just want to go ball because it's so beautiful. And, uh, and I read the entire thing that night at like three um, in the morning and was just like, uh, you're just amazing. Just absolutely brilliant. That's how I've experienced every book since. And you were one of the like, first readers of Breathless. Yeah, I was one of the first readers and I knew yeah. that you would hit it out of the park again. I mean- So what was your thought when you read that first, cause it was like first manuscript, it was, it was early. Raw. Like it, it was, was really raw. I, I, did, did I send a message to you or to Angelo after like 50 pages that was basically just, I don't want to say the swears that I, I was both. Maybe yeah. like there was a lot of cursing of like, how do you do this? It's so <laughs> maddening that you have so much talent. Um, that was absolutely, and this was a rough draft. Like if you saw my rough drafts, they're horrifying. And yours was literally brilliant the first time. Oh so yeah, and, and then of course just got better. I'm actually reading it for the second time right now. Uh, I just had to finish reading a book that I was blurbing, but I'm about halfway through it right now and loving it probably even more if that's possible the second time around. Oh my gosh, thank you. So without any real, real spoilers, what's, uh, what's your favorite thing about Breathless? How did it make you feel? Cause that's what I always wonder, you know, when, 
being with Jennifer and, and, and asking when I read something and I say, well, how do you want me to feel when I read this? And I'm curious if it did elicit that emotion and, and if not, and so how, what's your favorite part of Breathless in terms of how did it make you feel? Well, it made me feel like literally, and, and I, you know, of course, we always say nice things about each other because we're friends, but I mean this as sincerely as I've ever meant anything in my life. It made me feel exactly the way every Jennifer Niven book makes me feel. I'm going to, now I'm getting teary, um, which is seen. Mm. Oh, and nice. so like, I don't know anybody who has the ability to do that more than you. It just is. And, and where you have to go to be able to do that. It's like bearing witness for everybody's experience. You just have such a way of tapping into the lived experience of all of us and sort of amplifying it so that it feels very beautiful and hopeful, even when it's painful. Um, so there's, there's just like a mix, something that you do. It's almost like you can almost hear the orchestra swell of like, you know, just life amplified. Um, and it's just, it's just so beautiful. I just love it. And, you. And, and, you know, if anybody has not read your books, I encourage them to obviously first and foremost buy Breathless and then go buy the other two as well, because they will not, they will not regret it. I feel the exact same way about you. The first time she drowned was one of my favorite, favorite books. And this one is now one of my other favorite books. It's just absolutely spectacular. And it made me ugly cry, which I loved because I don't do that a lot. And your writing is so beautiful and lyrical and powerful. Well, thank you. That You know that you're like my writing hero. So that means oh, likewise. so much to me. And by the way, I just have to uh, give a shout out because my, my second book came out in May and it was like full pandemic, like horrifying. And Jennifer was like basically like a mom trying to like lift the car off a baby because nobody knew this book was coming out. And Jennifer was just using every possible like leverage she had as a huge best-selling author to get attention on my book. And like, if you find a friend who's willing to do that for you in publishing, it's just, it's just amazing. It is just the most selfless, beautiful, awesome thing. And I will never forget that you did that. Thank you. Well, it's... Sorry, sorry, everybody. This is like the most sincere. All right. Well, this took a turn. I think on that note, we're going to put Carrie. In... Oh no, you can stay, but let's bring everybody else back on to. Um... Yeah. Okay. So come see us, every all the other uh, authors there. This is so fun. I'm hearing all these beautiful things. Oh my goodness! I'm starting to cry. Carrie, as only Carrie can make me do. <laughs> Adriana, where are you? 100%. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know if the other authors heard just now, but um, one of the unique, I think I have a unique perspective in terms of not being from the world of, of publishing and also have kind of this window into, and I, and I know everybody's process is different, but to watch an author and Jennifer when she was writing Breathless and working on any project, it is so excruciating what just, just, she just comes out. I know, I'm out. always like this, like. And, and the admiration I have for the ability to really pour that onto a page and then, you know, really the, the, the courage to put it out there. And one of, one of the things that I really think is, is just spectacular about everybody here is that they're so willing to support each other and they all, everybody writes things that, that is that, that is that powerful and, and just spills and, and, it, and it helps so many people. And that's, I think, the power of books. And, um, mm -hmm. and- Books are so needed and necessary. And I just, you know, and I know that, that all of you feel this way too. I mean, we feel so grateful to be a part of this community and so supported by each other, but also by our readers who are just, you know, oh, I always God, say they're, so they, yeah, they're like, the readers are everything. And it's, I liked writing for adults and I like adults, some of them, <laughs> but I mean, the reading, writing for young adults is the best because you are the most passionate, discerning, smart readers. And we're so grateful. We couldn't do what we do without you. So true. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, go ahead. 
Well, no, I was just saying also, I mean, with Janet here, I think it is, as everybody is saying, that the, the link of the chain of the independent bookstores is so crucial. I mean, again, I personally know people who Janet or somebody to have it hand sold my books to them and it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, we the authors are lucky because we get all the thanks. Um, we get the people who email us at three in the morning to say, I just finished the book, this is what it means to me. But more often than not, it is, it just traces back to some magical independent bookstore that just made sure that they had the books for the, the kids who needed them. And I, I was expecting to get the favorite bookstore question. So I was saving my like avid love for that. So I just want to, but again, I, I do think, I mean, I think we're celebrating Jennifer, but I do also really want to say happy birthday to Avid too. And, and again, yeah, I, I love that all of us have, that question's really hard. What is your favorite book story? Because like, really we do, I mean, the, there's this network that is like empowering all of us and, and Avid is a wonderful, wonderful way station on that network, but all of us could name a dozen, two dozen, three dozen bookstores that we all feel this tenderness and this love towards because they have shown us the tenderness and the love and that is what passes to the readers too. 100%. You're our heroes, I mean. So Janet, what can we do as consumers, readers, readers to help independent bookstores besides the obvious? Well, I think one thing that seems to be the most obvious answer is to purchase books with Avid Bookshop and other independently owned stores. It's also really powerful if you um, are in a position where you can't buy a book, that's okay. Spread the word about a bookstore that you love. Write them a Google review, write them a Yelp review. Um, if you see someone online who's saying, oh, I love this new book by Angelo, here's the link to it on Amazon. You can easily say like, hey, looks like Angelo lives in such and such town. Here's a bookstore in his town. Like, just sort of a gentle way of sort of retraining people away from moving, uh, automatically linking to Amazon all the time. Because um, while Amazon wants to dominate everything, they started with books on purpose. And I think one thing that we've had a struggle with, and you might've seen there's a big national campaign right now to educate people about Amazon. But one of the things is like, do you really want Amazon to, do you want to give your money to a multi-trillion dollar company right now? Or do you want to think about what sort of world you live in when the pandemic is over? And so I think all of us are dealing with a world right now where we, we have less security than we ever had and we're more aware of that. But if you do have, you know, a hundred pennies to spend or a hundred dollars to spend, think about each of those as being a vote. And so think like, I'll give $2 to this locally owned grocery. I'll give $3 to my local bookshop because every time you do that, you're voting for the sort of world you wanna live in now. And also once we emerge from our houses and can go back into the world again, you'll know that you did what you could. And just like with voting, every single dollar as a vote, every single vote you cast in the election, all of this matters and these things add up. So what, what could be, you know, the tiniest, teeniest bit of Amazon's day that wouldn't affect them anyway can mean if one of my employees gets a paycheck or not like these things right. really matter and that also for for readers i think it's important to consider that if there's not a an independent bookstore around then like we tend to be the ones that take chances on newer authors um on authors who maybe aren't automatically already huge bestsellers so we take a chance we get to meet them at conferences like jen and jennifer and i met at a conference and hit it off like you get to meet people connect with them and then I physically hand a customer a book when it's safe and say, I know David Levithan. He's not only a great writer, but he's a good person. This is someone that you can feel good supporting and that sort of ripples out. So I just think, um, and one of our media specialists we work with just mentioned author visits. A lot of independent bookstores bring authors to local schools. So if you're students in the community or if you are a student watching this and you've had an author come visit your school, it's likely that an independent bookstore brought that to you. So like we're the ones that can help create these chances where you can interact with people who have literally changed your life. Um, and if we're taken out of the equation, we can't do that anymore. So we very much want to stay here and keep facilitating these relationships. Yeah. So everybody's got to, to buy a book if you can. And if you can't, leave a review. And, yeah, and tell and people about the, the bookstore. Yeah, absolutely. And also your favorite author. I think that's one of the unique things too you can do that say you already have a book or you can leave a review. And, or if like David's book's coming out 
in, in two weeks, put it on your to be read list on, you know, on Goodreads or, or, or what have you. And, and those types of support for the authors yeah. make all the difference. Um, and we're going to give for the holidays, we're, we're trying to give books as gifts or oh, gift yeah. cards for, for. I'll be ordering from you, Janet, just go. so you know. Be ready. So, <laughs> all right, kids. So we were going to do a quick, uh, fun, really read through, um, kind of like the Mad Libs of all these crazy authors. So what I need from somebody in the audience is to pick a number between one and 300. Here we go. A lot of answers. Zach Payne just doubled 64, that. 64, 64. 64. Okay, we're all right. So, so Adriana's up first. So yep, all the authors are going to turn to page 64 in their respective book. And I've got yours, Clutter. <laughs> I'll read yours. So typical. I'm like the kid who didn't bring their pencil or paper to school. You know? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> and so each author, we're going to read the first, let's read the first sentence of the first paragraph. Like the first full paragraph? First full paragraph. And I go last. And Jennifer will go last. So Adriana's the first. She starts with. I look at my hands. When she's in this outfit midday, it's a sure sign that she's not feeling well. They looked at each other for a long, long minute. But he doesn't stop. Glanced in the rear view, caught Hannah looking back, stricken. What? There is a dock ahead, and the boat slows, and a smiling boy wearing glasses and a bright yellow shirt stands waiting for us. There we go. We wrote a story together. <laughs> that was like a love poem. Strangely <laughs> seamlessly. That was yeah, I like got the chills. I'm like, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> so deep though. I was looking for something yeah. very funny and lighthearted, and that I, I like no, have to it was go. Very moody. I'm gonna have to play that back. <laughs> yeah. That was good stuff. So yeah. I think too, we should take some questions uh, from readers. Yeah. So if you have a question um, for anybody or uh, about breathless or or anything, throw it out there. And while questions are coming up. I will say one of the interesting things also from my perspective of watching Jennifer go through this process is although there was elements of, of our story and it was incredible to see some of that come out on the page was to see how Claude's journey, <laughs> there you go, but of things that happened to Jennifer in, when she was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and how those came out on the page and, and see the real struggle and, and growth of, of a character. You know, it's it's a love story, but it's it's so much more in terms of who Claude is and, and she's a real heroine. It's really Thank you. It's it's really cool to see how that from an idea to a rough draft to you know, edit and and first pass, second pass, and and it's incredible as as all the authors here do. So um, it's a special story, but it's it's powerful. So, beautiful. Yeah. I was talking with y'all earlier today about like I'm on the sales side of things, of course. And so like as a bookstore owner, I get marketing materials from the publisher, from the marketing department telling me what a book is about. But then when you actually read the book, sometimes you find out there's so much more nuance, there's so much deeper to it. And I mentioned on our Instagram TV today that like this story, yeah, there's a love story and it's awesome and it's like sexy at parts, you can get, it's so good. But also like it's Claude finding out who she is once everything else is stripped away. So it's this beautiful, like affirming book of someone being pushed to the brim and finding out that she's still there no matter what. Like, oh, I just loved it. And so I think sometimes a little bit of the, what you hear as like the advertising copy, all that's true. But I think there's a lot more to it that I hope our readers are going to be able to access. Yeah. On that, actually, a question we have from a reader okay. is: It says it says breathless is more personal to you than all the bright places. How could that be? I think that you know it's interesting because breathless is 
is personal to me in two ways. So All the Right Places was inspired by a boy I loved and lost to suicide years ago. And um, I was actually in my 20s when I knew him. So it was, I, I said it in high school because suicide is such uh, an important issue to talk about with teens. And with Breathless, it was what Claude goes through as an 18 year old is what I went through as an 18 year old. Just a few days before graduation, her parents tell her that they're separating and she feels as if the floor has been pulled out from underneath her feet. This is the first time like the whole world changes in an instant for her. And that happened to me. And um, my mom and I moved away that summer and Claude and her mom move away that summer. And I felt very isolated and alone. And I really, it's where I began. Like that's where I began. That is the moment I really became me. And I, so I put all of that in Claude and her experience. And then years later, of course, went to this island with my best friend, Angelo, to do a writing retreat. And I met my now husband. So all the adventures we had, although Claude and Jeremiah are not us, um, the adventures that they have in the book are adventures that we had while we were falling in love. And so it's it's like personal and a very emotional kind of like sad place and then emotional in this very happy place for me. It was, it was and I, like, I need to interject here and say something about Jennifer that she's not going to say obviously about herself and her writing and what she's been able to do with this book. And like Carrie, I'm going to try not to get emotional because Carrie and I have two weepy people in the, in the group here. Um, but Jennifer makes everything she does look super easy. She makes it look like, she makes you believe that you can do what she does because she makes it look so easy. And then you try to do what she does and you're like, oh God, I can't. <laughs> because this is the talent that this woman has. And all of that has been poured into this book. Like every last ounce of her brilliance and her effortlessness and her glow and her smarts have been poured into this book and it's like Don't it's incredible it it's so incredible that it's it, i think that you know to the point that was made earlier that sometimes the blur about what, what a book is like when it's coming out isn't enough to give you the whole scope of what this book is you have to really read it thank you oh my gosh i will say that i i don't I don't know if any of you have seen like the Mindy project. I'm obsessed with Mindy Kaling, but I did spend many a day lying on the floor like she does in that. You know, there was like, a lot just, of tears shed on the floor. Or just like, ah, oh. and I know that all of you can relate to that. That whole like, what am I even doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this for a living? But you can't <laughs> not write. We're all built that way. It's in us. Yeah. yeah. Are there? What else we have, sir? What um, what music's inspiring you right now? So something you're listening to? Maybe we should just go around right quick and everybody name a song. Ready, go, Carrie Clutter. <laughs> <laughs> that was cruel, but I've actually been listening to, really was. to the All the Bright Places soundtrack. Ah. I'm not saying this just as like a plug to Jennifer. That's what I've been listening to as I write. It's an incredible, yes. incredible music to write to. I love it. It's so beautiful. Love. It really is. We. <laughs> We pretty much have Harry on like nonstop. <laughs> Look at David. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked this question. Why well, I, I like to listen to Harry Styles. In fact, Alexa is like, here's something you might like. And she just automatically plays him because our 10 year old daughter and I love it. And we do dance parties, Harry Styles dance parties. I'm, I'm laughing because when you showed that before, because of the glary thing in my eyesight, I was like, why does she have an Andrew Cuomo doll? <laughs> I would have that. That's what I would have. <laughs> that is perfect. Sir David. It takes yeah. a dark turn. You know, when I look, yeah, look closely at him oh. and the clothes. It, it makes much more sense. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> it took a political <laughs> turn. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. Janet, what's your, uh, what's your song right now? You know what's odd is I've been going back to what I listened to in high school. Like I graduated in 98. So it's been like a lot of songs I can turn way up and sing along. Like a lot of Indigo Girls, a lot of Dar Williams, mm -hmm. a little Nancy Griffith here. And there. like a lot of like my folk rock where I was like, these people get me. It's like, it's right back to that. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's been a few weeks now and I'm, I'm deep in it. Also, I don't think I've ever heard a Harry Styles song. I hope you still love me. <gasps> Oh my God! Alexa, Somebody turn her camera off. <laughs> so, David, who are you listening to? Yona Apple. 
Ah, so good. Stuff. The people wow. you were listening to in 1999 are still the people you're listening to now. Is it the new album or are you like back on title? I mean, I love the new album, but I, I mean, it made me go back and listen to all the other ones again and again and again. But the new album is, is extraordinary. Amazing. Angela, how about you, buddy? I'm going to bring the class to the room because I'm listening to early Britney Spears. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the reason, listen, I have no shame or guilty pleasure about that whatsoever. You, got her, you did her haircut, so. Yeah, hello. Um, but <laughs> I, I'm in the middle of writing something really like dark and not so much fun. So I'm like, Brittany, hit me baby one more time. It's hitting me baby one more time just right. <laughs> and to you, Brittany. I love that you call it early yeah. Britney Spears as if you're like, you're like, it's an indie band. You're like, oh yeah, no, I loved her before everybody else. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, um, like, and you're welcome yeah, to <laughs> <laughs> Everybody sang folklore, which, by the way, is yeah, amazing. Yeah. I, I love it. it. Oh is amazing. Yeah. And speaking of Britney, oh my yeah, gosh! And also, uh, readers, I want to see what you're you're listening to in the comments, so we can have some uh, some good stuff to listen to. But Britney, ready go. Oh my gosh! Um, I just listen to emo all the time. I'm like still a 15 year old girl. I am listening to the new Jimmy Eat World. It's their 10th album. All I do is listen to Jimmy Eat World and then just like have a little cry in my car and um, pretend that I'm not like a 30 something woman with a job. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's one thing like adults told me all growing up, like when they'd be like, I know I'm 40, but like, I still feel my teenage self. I'd be like, you don't even, you, what are you talking about? And now that it's happening, I'm like, kids, it's real. <laughs> it really is. So this is taking a turn. Just this me. is taking a turn. That's right. Let's hear Adriana. Adriana. <laughs> got two things in my car right now josh ritter and a 90s comp that starts with uh iris by the goo goo dolls Ooh. Nice. V very good i sing very loudly and badly <laughs> that's the only way to do it so the, the readers have got a little chris stapleton the traveler album nice. he's in, um, chris stapleton's in breathless oh uh, yeah <laughs> A little uh, BTS music, a Korean artist. Uh, nice. Tears for Fears. Well done, wow. Margaret. Wow. Um, Jamiroquai. What oh, else? We got? Yeah. I haven't heard that. I interviewed ah. him. Hamilton soundtrack oh, nice. from yeah. our Always excellent. Always. Leader, the Always iPhone. Nice. I love it. Um, Noah Kahan or Khan. Um, yeah, we've got. Quite a few coming. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Yeah. Oh, Jersey, Jersey represent. We're one out. <laughs> represent Jersey. Good. We're also <laughs> listening to like Chris Stills. We like some Chris Stills. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, oh, and, and also Harry. <laughs> <laughs> also known as, known as Mario Cuomo. Cuomo. Oh, Mario Cuomo. <laughs> there we go. One of the Cuomos. Well, kids, we're, uh, and kids, I mean, the, the participant kids. Right. Um, we're uh, so grateful you guys decided to join. And also too, it's so amazing to see such incredible talent um, all support each other. And I think, especially during times uh, such as now, um, it's those moments and those, that, that kindness and, and we're grateful. I know Jennifer's grateful, I'm grateful. And Harry's um, grateful. Harry's grateful. But, uh, and excited to get some of your books uh, as well that are coming out, so. Yeah. Um, Janet, you have information on how folks can get stuff, correct? Yes. Give so away. we're sending everybody an email in a, in a little bit um, that has another link to bre uh, Breathless, not to breakfast, <laughs> that would be nice, um, but to just thank you for coming. Um, but I also would love to announce some winners. But while we do that, as you guys know, we're doing a lot of giveaways tonight for those who are at the event. Um, and if this is an okay time, I'd love to invite anyone who feels comfortable to reveal their photo, their uh, cameras so that we can wave hi and you can wave hi to Jennifer hey, and all the are. authors. Hey. And authors, make sure you scroll through the different screens because we're gonna have multiple screens of people here. Oh, oh and we did have had one more question while you're sorting out some giveaway yeah, stuff. Do it. We had a, fan, a reader question on, do you have a specific fan interaction or incident or reader interaction that's made an impression on you? And that's really hard because I know you've had quite a few. Oh my goodness. So but, um, there's so many. And every single one, I mean, every single one has been so special and amazing. And I think for me, one of the hardest things about being in quarantine is not getting to see you 
face to face, not getting to hug you. I know my fellow authors feel the same way. And we just love you so much. And I can't wait until the world opens again and we can see you in person. It's going to be amazing. But just seeing your face right now, it, and it will, will happen. happen. Just seeing you right now. You're all so beautiful and lovely. Ah, <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my gosh, there's so many. It's so cool. <laughs> And look at us all together. I know we should take a, a picture together. It's I really need like a huge projector screen so we can fit everyone. This is yeah. Lot, we got so more cool. than twenty five people who are so choosing cool. not to reveal themselves, which is fine. But that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah, here. You should bring up your square anyway, and, and yeah. uh, there we go. So we can see even if it's just the square. So while we do, I'm going to do some giveaways for those of you who are here. So we're going to go back in alphabetical order according to the people that were here. And then we'll end with Jennifer and Justin as the last giveaways. Does um, anybody want any books? I mean, maybe <laughs> who wants a gift card? Never mind. We'll end it. <laughs> um, so starting with Adriana, what do you have to give away to a lucky winner? The lucky, I used a random number generator, so. I won't tell you who the name is, but it's number 36 is going to get this one. What, what do you have for them? I have a signed copy of How to Hang a Witch, which Ooh. is an autumnal read. <laughs> Perfect. So that winner is Kelly Schwint. Are you still here, Kelly? If not, Hi. since... <gasps> there she is. Hi. Congratulations, Kelly. Awesome. Um, so much. When I email you, well, everybody on here will get an email um, after the event. So just respond to that email um, with your uh, mailing address and we'll get you your book. All and right. The winner right now is Avid because Brooke just bought seven books. <gasps> you saw it in the messages. Yay! Yay. That's awesome. That's amazing. 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 I think I know who cool. that is. <laughs> um, so we have that for Adriana's book is Kelly Schwint. All right. So Thanks. next up, we have Angelo. What are you giving away tonight? I am giving a signed copy of The Dangerous Art of Blending In, my debut YA novel, and I'm happy to do it. Beautiful. And that goes to someone who just said she couldn't show her screen, and her name is Margaret Robbins. Margaret. Oh, 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 hey, Margaret. Good music. Yeah. She has good music. Yeah. Margaret is a longtime avid reader, so this is awesome. That's awesome. All right. Next up, who do we have? We have... Brittany, what do you have to give away tonight? I am giving away a copy of my most recent book, Hello Girls, which Jennifer blurred. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Brittany's copy of her book goes to someone who, when I looked at the list, their screen name was just Beth. I didn't see a last name. Is that Beth still here? If so, you can just comment in the chat. Beth, are you still here, Beth? If not, I will do all I can to track you down. <laughs> possible. Oh, Beth, oh, yes, from oh, Beth to everyone. Yes, Beth. Yay. We don't know who you are. Yay. You're the winner. So Good respond stuff. to our email tonight and we'll make sure we get this book to you. All right, that's exciting. All right, next up, who do we have? We have David Levithan. What would you like to give away tonight, David? A new car. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I'll put my name in the list. One of you look under your chair, and if you find <laughs> everybody gets a car. <laughs> um, I have up in, in for the next two weeks. This will be my new book, Nineteen Love Songs, which came out at the beginning of the year. It's not a signed copy, but I have a pen, so I'll make it a signed copy. <laughs> Um, and that goes to someone I know has known Jennifer for many years, her friend Valerie Stone. Yay. Number 22. <laughs> little random.org. So yay, Valerie. I saw you here briefly. I don't know if she's still here, but she, she will get that book. Um, all right. Who do we have? And how did you pick the winners, Janet? I used random.org because I'm a rule follower. And I want to tell you, it truly is random. So I used a random number generator. And I gave everybody who signed in to the event tonight a number one through 50. So this is legit. Okay. Um, so who do we have next? We have Carrie Clutter. Oh, are you going to give away once you find you it? Hold up your book, <laughs> Carrie. Yeah. Um, first, I'm going to give away a signed copy of East Coast Girl. Mm -hmm. which Carrie, is my can you hold book. up your book? Hold up your book, Carrie. Carrie. <laughs> She's not. She doesn't have one. The, the first copy, this first book uh, that Carrie's giving away goes to someone whose screen name is in the middle of somewhere. 
Oh, wow. Ooh. You already has congratulated the winners. And look at, yes, you. Congratulations. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yay. Hooray. That's very exciting. Yes. Great. So uh, respond to our email tonight. We'll get your mailing address. And then, Carrie, am I to understand you have something else you're giving and then away? I'm going Ooh. to give away my YA novel, The First Time She Drowned, a signed copy of that. Nice. All right. And that goes to number 39, who is Sean Hinger, who is a media specialist <laughs> at a local. Um, Middle school, hooray, Sean. Oh, cool. All right, finally, we got we got some Justin Conway and Jennifer Niven creations. I don't even know what you guys ended up bringing for tonight, but what you got, we'll start giving them away. I have a few more people pulled up. Oh, what is that? Uh, breathless. So, Beautiful. Breathless, which will be signed. I also have some swag to go with it. Mm -hmm. The one copy of Breathless signed uh, with some swag goes to Romy Matsy. Romy, R O M Y. Are you still here, Romy? I don't know. You guys are very. Oh, I see Romy. Yay. Romy's got a nice, comfy hoodie on. We are ready. All right. So, Romy, respond to our email. We'll get your mailing address. All right. Anything else, Jennifer Niven? Yes. So, but wait, there's more. There is a UK copy of Breathless. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ooh. And you will not easily get this in our fair country. Oh. That goes to someone whose last name sounds very familiar. First name Beth, last name Levithan. Oh, and if you're a relative here. Oh, it's a rigged election. It's oh, rigged. this is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, think, Beth. I think, too, which we should do is give away some of the breathless swag with each of the breathless. Oh, books. yeah, there will be swag with each of the books. So there's some handmade by Jeremiah stuff. Um, Janet's I, actually modeling some earrings. Let's, let's see. So, shark tooth earrings. Some mm -hmm. sharks to, and the sharks to teeth. We actually found um, when we met. Island. So uh, you'll get a little piece of that. And, and I also bracelet. A bracelet. Um, so we'll send that. And I think also we might as well give away another copy of Brown. Oh, while well, we're at it, yeah. I need to know who this will go to. This will go to Kayla Lee. Are you here, Kayla? <gasps> Kayla's here. Hey. Hey. Yay. Hey. Kayla, just respond to our email and we'll get you a copy of Breathless with some of the swag. And <laughs> One more UK copy with swag. All right, and that UK copy goes to Liz Lawson, who is also a young adult author. Is she Yay. still here? I think she has a young child. She might have had to. Lizzie, are you here? She's a great author. Her book came out in April, right? Her debut have, novel in the pandemic. I have her book right, right over there. Oh yay! So that's awesome. I know. I think she has Breathless, but now she'll have the UK edition. Um, all right, and now finally, the last two things we have: we have a twenty-dollar avid oh, gift wait, card. We have one more. Oh, oh my God, y'all! <laughs> and I think this one should also be not just one, but two, so that whoever gets it, if you'd reply to the email, you can give it to a friend. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So two copies of all the right places: one for you, one for a loved one. That goes to Zach Payne, who's been very Yay! active. Oh, yay! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Love you, Zach. <laughs> love um, you, Zach. We love Zach. We all love Zach so much. Finally, our last um, two prizes. We have a $20 gift card to Avid, and then we have a $50 gift card to Avid. Whoa. Both of them can be redeemed online, so if you're not local, don't sweat it. Money. Um, money. The $20 gift card goes to Ismail Kanturk. I don't know if I said your name right. Ismail are you still here? It's I S M A I L. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Oh, yay. yay. Awesome. So respond to our email and we'll send you a code for your $20 gift card. And the very last one, come on. The $50 gift card goes to Rainy Lynch, who is a local avid customer. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yay. Yay. This is so exciting. I really want to thank all of you for being here and, and ending this with just a fun party that we all can celebrate. I do hope to, so we'll be publishing this on YouTube eventually. Um, the chat has been very active and very funny. So I think our interns are going to try to save it. Um, but if y'all want to interact, um, our Instagram page is Avid Bookshop, just at Avid Bookshop. 
If y'all want to follow us um, and comment on the most recent Breathless event post, you guys can kind of stay in touch. I would love, it seemed like a lot of people really hit it off in the chat. So I hope you'll be able to follow each other there. Um, we have a couple more events this year and then we're just going to ramp up for the holiday season. But we do have a book club called the YA for Not So YA's Book Club. Um, and now that we are doing everything via Zoom, we meet digitally uh, and virtually. So we really invite you to join us and be an avid customer and, and participant no matter where you live. And um, the Avid Bookshop crew, just drop that in the chat. Um, thank you so much for celebrating Avid's birthday. This is, Happy I thought birthday, it was going Avid. to feel like- Happy birthday. Happy birthday. But it's birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy week birthday to Jennifer's book, Breathless. Yeah. And, yeah. So well and be loved by so many of us. Thank you to all the authors and all the people who came tonight. We really appreciate your time and thank you for letting us go a little bit over.